Okay, this will be the part, I guess, two of this, which will be a, a intro to the Valley of the Dry Bones. And we're here at the HebrewIsraelites.org um, site, Dry Bones. So we're going to continue with um, Hosea chapter 13 and 3. Now, speaking of Ephraim, make that connection, the Afro-American, the Afra, the Ophir, Ephraim, doubly fruitful, Yovzan, Afro-Americans of the North, America and of South America and everything between, right? Um, spoke trembling, exalted himself in Israel when that identity, that, that, that positive identity started to rise in the turn of the, before the turn of the century was known for a while, but when it started to really emerge in the so-called um, 20th century, the early 1900s, and we have the commandment keepers and, and other congregations there too. Now, we were down here where it basically shows us how they sinned more and more, and they made these idols of silver and gold according to their understanding, the whole bling bling. And it's a, it connects us now with the whole Freemasonry, the craftsmen, right? And they say of them, let men that sacrifice kiss the calves, a, 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 a likeness of the golden calves, of false worship, the contemptible gospel. You understand the prosperity gospel and, and everything we see going on out there in slave masses, uh, New World Order plantation churches out there, right? 13 and 3 says, Therefore they shall be as the morning cloud and as the early dew that pass away, as the chaff that is driven by the whirlwind out of the floor, and as the smoke out of the chimney, you know, the threshing floor, there's chaff that's left behind like rubbish, but the wind come and take it away. You understand? And the smoke, when the smoke come out the chimney, the wind come and disperses it. So we're seeing something now in the present media, in the present state of, of so-called black America, lost sheep America, the lost sheep America's 2012 A.D. You understand? But the scriptures tell us this is a passing phase. This is a path because it has no staying power. You understand? It has no life. This is just more of the valley of the dry bones. Now, when the Israelites went after other gods and they served them, that's when they died. Isn't it so interesting what's happening now? Now we're going after this new black thing, you know, this new black way of looking at, 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 at so-called life and everything, this false prosperity. You understand um, this living in the image of the beast, going after other gods, and this is the, this is what's shortening the lifespan and the ex, and, and and the life um, expectancy. You understand, and it's also adversely affecting the Western economies too, especially the American economy. That's part of it too. You understand, they turned from serving Yah, and they died spiritually. Mm-hmm. See, some of y'all out there have done this on a certain level. You'll think you'll have turned or been turning or distracted from serving Yah and, and learning his word. You understand? And seeking the fellowship with others. You understand? Or at least fellowship just in the Holy Spirit with Yeshua HaMoshiach if you cannot find others. You understand? And you're going after other things. You know, you're taking joy in, in, in other things. You understand? And, 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 and making them gods, giving them high worth and value in your heart and your mind. And that's when you start to die spiritually. But you might still keep a little bit of, of, of um, desire towards Jah. And this is where the, the double-mindedness comes in. This is where the, the, the double-mindedness comes in. And it can be, depends on the intensity of you holding to the other gods and still trying to hold to Jah. You cannot serve two masters. Mm -hmm. You can't serve two masters, you know. Um, like they say, a woman can't have two husbands. I know uh, nowadays they're trying everything, but, but how is that working out? Proverbs 21 and 16 says, The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding, or we say is overstanding, shall remain in the congregation of the dead. That's deep, Right? Proverbs 21 and 16, it says that the man, any person, any human being that wanders out the way of understanding shall remain, remain. Notice that word. He's wandering, but he's remaining in the congregation of the dead. He's remaining in the duat, the tuat. He's remaining in amenta. 
You know, you understand? He's a ma- remaining in double mindedness, which is the land of the dead. And now, notice that connection right there. Israel, the Beit Israel, we falashes of the West, exilists of the West, Ethiopian Hebrews. We have wandered out of the way of overstanding or understanding, if you please. You understand? We rejected knowledge. We rejected knowledge, the knowledge of the Son of God, our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. And now, this people, we, in, in the sense of speaking just black people, or you all, you are in the congregation of the dead. This is why they're wearing skulls and bones, because they're identifying, they're getting tattooed on themselves, too. Mm-hmm. The wildest thing, some Negroes, I, I never thought they knew anything about hieroglyphics. Some of them getting hieroglyphic tattoos from the Book of the Dead on their bodies. You know what I mean? Men and women. You know, this is crazy. I'm like, wow. I didn't know they'd know anything about the Book of the Dead. Do they know anything about that? Obviously, they do. You know what I'm Because that's the duat. That's the wilderness. Biblically speaking, the Book of the Dead, biblically speaking, is Israel coming out of Egypt and into the wilderness. Right? So Israel now, black people now, are a spiritually dead people. But we have also lost our identity, so we are twice dead. So we're dead spiritually to the true spiritual life that even Gentiles, righteous Gentiles, can tap into it. You understand? They can tap into it. We can see them use the same Bible. You understand? Being the similar type churches and everything. And we see their communities all different. You know what I'm saying? Their communities are all different by comparison. Maybe not perfect, but more perfecting than what we see in the so-called black communities with thousands of churches. You know what I'm saying? On a couple of on 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 a couple of square in, in a couple of square miles, so to speak. Now, um, so there's a twice dead syndrome. Twice dead. What do we mean by twice dead? And this is interesting because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad spoke also to this particular point, and I think he understood we are to Israel, but try to do his part, you know what I'm saying, and just bringing the black man so-called out of the gutter and onto the sidewalk, you know what I'm saying, but by coming in to the true knowledge of Yeshua HaMoshiach, you know what I'm saying, to the glory of our Heavenly Father, we come into the house. We're not just on the sidewalk, but we come into the house. So we have lost our identity. Remember this key word, identity. So we are now twice dead, spiritually dead, you understand, and dead to knowledge of who we really are. Or as Ezekiel would say and says, we are very dry, not just dry. You know, dry is dry. You know, like nobody like no chap lip syndrome, you know what I mean? And black folks don't like ashy skin generally, though it happens. You know you know what I'm saying? But imagine very ashy, very dry. Look at what Yeshua, you know what I'm saying, Yehoshua, look what he says in Matthew 8, verses 21 to 22. Let's, let's highlight this right here. Matthew um, chapter 8, verses 21 to 22. He says, um, and another of his disciples said to him, Master, um, Rabboni, or Rabbi, Rabbi, you know, saying, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Let me bury my my father, my my fleshy. Verse twenty-two. But Yeshua, he 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 said to him, follow me, right. And let the dead bury their dead. Let the dead bury their dead. He said, follow me, but let the dead bury their dead. Now, let's understand this. Yeshua, Adonenu, he was saying, let the spiritually dead. Remember, this has to be understood spiritually. See, most people try to understand the Bible, New Testament. They're not even born again. They're not even considering that that is a prerequisite to really comprehending what's in the Bible. You understand? You know, it's a very personal thing, but you have to come to the core, the foundation. You understand? Uh, a, a kind of a self-recognition. So he was saying that, that the dead, who are spiritually dead, let them bury the physically dead. That's why what eventually emerged is a whole class of undertakers. Think about that. Because, see, the whole death thing is a part of the, the greater, the bigger curse. You understand? Um, so those who are spiritually dead, they focus a lot on the physical death. Like a lot of these folks in this most recent situation, you know, police brutality, and they keep killing our people, they keep searching and so forth and so on. And yes, Babylon is, is wrong in so many ways 
to the the first day. You know what I'm saying? Is 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 wrong. But they're not really dealing with the real situation that keeps them going around the same old mountain every single time. Those spiritually dead people were the Israelites, the Beit Israel. We have been dead for such a long time, as Yah shows here again when we get to the book of Isaiah. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 65 and 2. I have spread out my hands all the day to a rebellious people which walked in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. You know, we did the woman of w wickedness thing and the Rihanna thing. Now Rihanna's in the news. Um, her two, her two bow worshipers, you understand, fighting among themselves and everything, uh, old man and her new man or whatever like that. But we heard she got, she got some perfume or line of stuff called Rebel, Rebel. You understand, Rebel, right? Well, I guess this this all figures into it because Isaiah already checked you. You understand? I have spread out my hands all day to a what kind of a people? A rebellious people, which walked in a way that was not good. They know what they're doing, and you look at their albums and everything, know what they're doing is not good after their own thoughts. You see, but then something happens, you're feeling all sorry for them, even though they were walking in a rebellious way and leading you in a rebellious way. Verse 3, a people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face. You understand? What people do that? What people do that? I know you like to say white folks. No, niggas. Niggas, blacks, and coloreds, lost sheeple, that sacrificeth in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick. You understand? Now, we have to understand this also. Um, metaphorically, you know, as well. We'll get into that. Now, here's the main point, verse 4, which remaineth among the graves. They remaineth among the graves. That's why whenever one of the uh, idols gets killed or sacrificed, you understand, they start wearing the T-shirt, they start doing all this memorial, they start having this really religious, spiritual feeling. It's like their Christ has gotten crucified. Mm-hmm. And you would love to have it so. I know people say, well, uh, you know, do you, 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 you're trying to be a devil's advocate? You're trying to make excuses for them? Don't do that, really. If you want to be of John's people, don't do that. You know, recognize their excuses, but don't make excuses for them. And lodge in the monuments. They lodge in the monuments. This is interesting. They lodge in the monuments. Um, what's the biggest ghetto, really, of niggas in the sense and most outrageous? It's, it's, it's D.C., among the monuments which eat swine's flesh. You know, they eat swine's flesh, having the Bible, knowing what the Bible clearly says, and they make all sorts of excuses, you understand, know out of eating pig, out of eating pork. They love some swine. They love them some pig. You know, now they glorify it with people like Wendy Williams and the rest of them got shows on TV, and this is how we, how we get down, and we enforce that curse because they're getting a little payola for the present. You understand, know but what will they get for the eternity? And broth, and the broth of abominable things in their vessels, the broth. You know how you make a, a broth, you mix up a lot of different stuff, you know, foods and stuff, you know, like a lot of different vegetables or whatever like that, or for other people, a lot of different type of meat all together. They mix a lot of different type of chaos, a lot of different type of garbage, you know, into what they present to this people. Yah said that Israel is dead, you know, and why do you think when they said hip-hop is dead, you say it's all over? And that's, that wasn't the meaning of it. It didn't have that meaning. Y'all thought it had that meaning. It meant that hip-hop is for the dead. It is for the dead. It is the way of the dead. Hip-hop. Now we're not talking about the musical, media, the musical form of it, so to speak. But we're talking about this false cult or this petri dish culture. Israel is dead. In verse 4, he says, we remain among the graves. So what's in the graves? It's dead people. Don't you get it? I see dead people. You see them every day. Israel refused to listen. They refused to hear to Shema. Shema Israel. Yahweh Eloheinu. Yahweh Achad. They refused to listen to Yah's word. But notice. What he says in verse 3, Yah says, we continually as a people, not just looking at, oh, it was his fault, it was his fault, if she did this, I don't like him, that person, the hater. No, to Jah, you're all haters. We continually as a people provoke him to anger. You understand? Provoke him to anger. And, and it manifests through what these Gentiles are doing. 
It, it does. You all, some of you don't see it because you're still spiritually dead. Repent and be born again, and you'll, you'll begin to see the big picture, the true picture, the real picture. You have joy in your life in spite of, 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 of the chaos and, and, and the lack of peace, the war in the world. You still will have the joy of Jah to get you through these things. You see, that's what, what I, I learned, too, like looking at all these stories and just trying to understand them in themselves and not going to the Word to get a foundation on it and recognize this is an example of what John said. He knew that we would not listen. So he had to do something else, right, to us to make us understand. He knew that we would not listen. So he had to do something else. Really, he had to allow something else to happen. You understand? To happen to us, to make us Get the picture. Now, let's return to Ezekiel chapter 37. And here it says in 37 and 5, Thus saith Yah to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Verse, um, verse 6, And I will lay sinews, sinews upon you. Study, study anatomy if you want to know about that, right? And will bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and, and put breath in you and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am Yah. And you shall know that I am yod Hey wow Hey. You shall know that. You shall know even what the meaning of that is. It is connected with the breath. It's connected with living. It's connected with breathing. That name Yah, that name Yahweh. Yo send Yod He Wow He. Eh Yah, Eh Shara, Asher Eh I am that I am. Yahweh, the living one is the living one is the one who lives. So, I prophesied, verse seven, as I was commanded. So as as. As Hezekiel, Nebiu Hezekiel, was commanded, he did. He prophesied. He spoke these prophetic words. This is what it says to prophesy. So when you hear of ones and ones, even in reggae, I'm a prophet, they better be telling you about the prophetic words up in their songs. You understand? Know and the prophetic words of the prophets. You understand? Know if they're not telling you about this, then they're false prophets, because that's what the prophets do, even in the New Testament sense. You know what I'm saying? They speak that prophetic word. They were speaking the word that Yeshua was the Moshiach, which the prophet spoke of. And that there will be a second, so-called, a second visitation or coming, not the Son, but the Father. And that is revealed to us in the King of Kings, Kedamawi, Haile Selassie. And that's when Ephraim spoke trembling. You know what I'm saying? But then they went, then they turned away. During the 60s and the civil rights movement from coming out of Babylon, they went deeper into Babylon. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. That means bone to his bone. And now on a deeper level, it's speaking about our ethnicity, recognizing our true tribal identity in that sense, our, our people our family, you know what I'm saying, even in spirit and, and even in truth, even our real family, because Satan has done a lot to divide the whole baby mama dramas, the deadbeat um, fathers. A, a lot of what has gone on is just, just outgrowth from the curse. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like 2.0, 2.5. It's like or 3 point. It's another point, another, another level of it. Verse 8 says, and I beheld, and I looked, and I saw, lo, look, lo is, is short for look, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. So that means they got bodies. You know what that means for us, and, and, and this is particular for, for even I, and as Rastafari, and as Ethiopian Hebrews, as the Beta Israel. That we start to look the part, you know, we start to dread, grow a dreadlock, you know what I mean? We start to wear um, holy Ethiopian clothing or try to wear clothing that is, that is more befitting of a royal dignity of a son or a daughter of the true and living God in the name of Yeshua, Hamoshi, our black Lord and Savior. But where is the breath, the true breath? In other words, what word comes out? You know, what, what breath, what spirit 
comes out. Is it Yah's word? You understand? Or are we still saying our own words? You understand? So we see the difference between Rasta and Rastafari. You understand? We begin to recognize those differences between those who hail Hala Selassie and those who hail his imperial majesty in the name of Yeshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior. Now, Yah told his Kiel to prophesy to the bones and Ezekiel. Zeke did as he was commanded. Scripture, the Metzhaf, says that bones heard, the bones heard Ezekiel, and they became flesh, but they still remained lifeless, lifeless, dead. In other words, they're getting, it's like many ones getting the message. So they're getting their flesh. They're getting the healthiness, recognizing even the ital is vital. You understand? And microbiotic and vegetarian Judaism and vegetarianism, they're getting that part. You understand? So they're improving how they eat and no white this, no white that, no white the other thing. You understand? White, you know, white salt, uh, white, white, white bread and, and, you know, those white flour and all those kind of white bleached things. Remember, these bones were bleached too, right? But they remained lifeless dead. They couldn't go about the movement. You understand the movement? And then this is where we're at right now, getting from inertia and getting back up to a movement of Jah's people. Exodus, movement of Jah people. Well, we can we sing that song, but really it's like inertia, stagnation of Jah's people. In other words, the bones heard the words of Yah or Jah, if you please until you learn better, right? They got excited and, and, and shook a little. I shook a little. You understand? They shook a little. There was a little bit of movement. You understand? Now, what this means is we were told we were the Israelites of the Bible, Beta Israel, right back in the 1920s and 30s, especially with those great movements, commandment keepers, Ethiopian World Federation, you understand, and even other movements like too, you understand, and there too, right? So they, they shook up a little bit, right? So we were told that we were the chosen people, the Chiruyan, the, the, the elect people, you understand, the chosen people. When we heard this, we began to want to hear the law back in the 20s and 30s, the commandment keepers. So when we're now going through the Torah portions and everything, it don't make it seem like it's something new, really. It's something that really we're trying to catch up to even the level that Wentworth Arthur Matthews Right, Rabbi Matthews, the level that they were on with the commandment keepers, because they had a whole curriculum, you understand, at that time. And they recognized Ethiopia and the King of Kings and the throne of David, you understand, which many Israelites now, there's some controversy concerning that because of a lack of knowledge. But so, so we want to hear the Lord, we want to find the righteous path, Right, But at the same time, we refuse as a people and individually, each of us must take an individual responsibility in this, to submit fully to Yah. And I would say to his Christ, to his Moshiach, to the King of Kings. You understand? And that order. And that order. Overstand this. So we began to look alive. This change in the 60s and 70s, when you look back at the videos and Soul Train, they began to look alive, but we're, we're still dead. They didn't want to hear what thus says Yah. You understand? They didn't want to hear the fullness of the message. They just got that part that's like, yeah. So they said, yeah, the Israelites, the real Israel is black and all this, and Jesus is black and so forth and so on. But they didn't want to hear the fullness of the message. They didn't want to grow up. You understand? They wanted to continue serving the false gods. You understand? Like Caesar Bogiers, a.k.a. Jesus and Allah, you understand? And, and a bunch of other kind of stuff and, and false doctrine and all these false teaching, prosperity, ghost spell, you understand? Contemptible gospel and all this other stuff. So therefore, they remained among the dead. And this is what we see going on. They remained dead. This is why Ezekiel... Um, 37 and 9, let's bring this up right here, 37 and 9, it says this, it says, Then he said to me, prophesy to the wind. So he said to prophesy to the wind. Put this out on the airwaves, yo. Prophesy to the wind. Prophesy, yes, so legit. Prophesy, son of man, child of humanity. 
you know what I'm saying, true human, true human being, and say to the wind, thus saith Yah, thus saith Yahweh, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, these slain that they may live. Now, this is interesting that now Ezekiel, right, um, he heard Adoni say to him to prophesy to the wind, right? And he prophesied, you understand, to the wind and say, come from the four winds, O breaths. Now, notice this, this is the cross. Overstand the cross now, the true cross in this, the four winds, right? The breath is coming from the four winds to one point, to one center, you don't like to rock hewn church and say, but to one center point, one centrifugal point is coming to. It's not prophesizing for something to go over there or go over there, but something to come to the center point from the four cardinal points. Remember, the tabernacle and this um, the Midbar study, the Hebrew book of Numbers, you know what I'm saying, with a tabernacle outline, you see the four winds, right, that the, that the breath now is to come. Right, the living breath, and breathe upon these slain. So these who are in a state of inertia are slain. In other words, we as a people have been slain. We've been slain, y'all. You understand? As a people. You know what I'm saying? That they may live. So this, this cross, we see this, it, it, it's showing us Christ, which is recognizing that the false god is their Caesar Bogiers. You understand that image and everything associated with that image and derivable from that image and that Roman copy wrong. That's a copy wrong, but we can call it their own copyright. So once again, Yah commanded Ezekiel, Ezekiel to prophesy, but this time it was not to the dry bones. Overstand, it was to the four winds. Yah said these four winds will breathe breath into these dry bones and they will live. This is interesting. I'll say this is very interesting. But um, you go to Menya. What is so special about the winds? that makes the dead come alive. What's so special about the winds? To answer this, we will have to see what the four winds are. For that answer, let's quickly look at the book of Donnell. And you know we've been studying also in this um, portion, this season, um, the book of Daniel prophetically. Now, Daniel chapter 7, verse 1, in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream. He didn't just try to remember. He wrote it down, right, and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake, verse 2, and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, look and see, here it is, the four winds of the heavens strove upon the great sea. Verse 3, and four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse, that means different, one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked or plucked off, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. A man's heart was given to it. Now, verse, um, verse 5, let's just highlight this right here so possibly you can see it. Um, verse 5, and behold, another beast, a second like to a beer, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said thus to it, arise, devour much flesh. Verse 6, after this I beheld, I looked and saw, and lo, look, another, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl, of a bird, so to say. The beast had also four heads. The dominion was, and dominion was given to it. It was given domination. It was given rulership, like lordship upon the earth. Verse 7. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, or iron teeth. It devoured and broke in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Now, Donnell 
has described the four winds as four beasts. Now let us look a little further in this chapter for the meaning of what the four beasts are. So let's, let's now look for what the meaning is in Daniel 7 and 17. Right, Daniel 7 and 17. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. So the four beasts are four kings or kingdoms which shall come out of the earth. These four kingdoms came upon the earth and brought destruction to our ancestors. They brought destruction to the true Beta Israel. These kingdoms are the Babylonians who are described as a lion with eagle's wings in verse 4. Next were the Medo-Persians or the Iranians, um, the Iraqi Iranians, who are described as a bear in verse 5. Next are the Greeks, and the Greeks are all in the news with austerity or, or protesting it. The Greeks under Iskander or Alexander the Great, they are described as a leopard with four wings in verse 6. And the last great, great beast is not physically described. It is so terrible, it has no image to be compared to. That means that Donnell could not describe it like anything that people previous to would, would know. So this is the Roman Empire in verse 7. All four of these kingdoms or winds blew upon Israel and caused them great pain. The Romans were the last of the winds. They were the ones to exile Israel. That's where we became Falashas in 70 A.D. And destroy Jerusalem and the temple. We are still under that same form of Roman oppression or as Rastafari overstand, down pression or keeping pressed down. Now the winds are still blowing on Israel today. The winds are still blowing on us, even from the four, four directions, you understand, the four kingdoms. And they're starting, you know, many of us are starting to wake up. We are now putting that, that flesh over these dry bones. Our enemies, through Yah, are executing the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and Leviticus chapter 26 on us. This is what is waking us up. This is what's waking many of us up. And if, and if you're, you're watching this and listening to this and studying your Bible and checking out the resources out there like this page and others on our site and others, and, and if, that's not, if that's not waking you up, you understand, if you're not waking, waking up, if you're not hearing the words of the Most High, then um, you need you know, you need to, to probably go elsewhere. You need to, you know, be turned over to Satan, I mean, fully. You understand? Because this, this is so, uh, so vivid. This is so dramatic, both in the sense of things that happen and are happening to us personally in our own lives and, and the destruction of the black family, the African-American family. You think it's just the, the so-called baby mamas who are, who are the main reason of the drama? You think it's just the deadbeat baby fathers? You think it's just these, these youth? That, that, that don't have no respect and won't pull up their pants. You, you think that's all, all there is to it? But we must do more now than here. Remember, the Israelites, they heard this, they woke up, but we must do more than just here. So the following scriptures, they prove further that the four winds are four powerful nations. In Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 6 and 7 says, Set up a standard towards Zion, towards Zion. Retire and stay not, for I will bring evil from the north and a great destruction, a great destruction. This is what's, what, 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 um, what's, happening, what's, what's happening in the world, but this is what is to happen also. Verse 7, the lion is come up from his thicket, and the destroyer of the Gentiles is on is on. His way, the destroyer of the Gentiles, he is, he is gone from his place to make thy land desolate. In reference to Israel and even East Africa, greater, greater inheritance inclusive of Ethiopia and the Horn of Africa. And thy city shall be laid waste without an inhabitant. Now this refers to the Babylonians historically first checking out the history, then seeing it in this prophetic time, this referred to the Babylonians attacking Judah. 
And, and now notice the Babylonians are called lions, which is kind of interesting. Lions, because there's an Ethiopian ancient connection, you understand, know with that, both in ancient times and in modern times. The, to really understand that connection is just, it's just a wonderful prophecy, and it really explains so many things. But let's understand this first, that the Babylonians are called lions, and just as they are described in the book of Daniel. And we go to verses... Um, 12 and 13 it says even verse 12 it says even a full wind from those places shall come to me now also will i give sentence against them so john is saying yah is saying he's going to give judgment against them he has them to do a work the gentiles but there's a judgment to come against them behold he shall come up as clouds and his chariots shall be as a whirlwind his horses are swifter than eagles. Woe to us, for we are spoiled. That's like saying, you know, in nowadays language, woe to us, because we're effed up. You understand? And as a people, in that sense, spoiled would be the very same thing as being, in that sense, effed up, as we use the word today. This is just so that ones will get it and won't have any excuse. There is still, speaking of Babylon, the first of the four winds, in verse 12, this is still speaking of Babylon, the first of the four winds. Now, in verse 12, they are called a full wind. Verse 13 says they are swifter than an eagle. Now, remember symbolism here. And the same symbols are, are used nowadays. Look at the dollar. Look at your dollar. In Donnell, they are said to be a lion with eagle's wings. The Babylonians came upon Israel, ancient black, true Israel, and blew a mighty wind. As it says, woe to us, for we are spoiled. Um, Hosea 13 and 7 says, Therefore, I will be to them as a lion, as a leopard by the way will I observe them. Hosea 13 and 8, I will meet them as a bear that is bereaved of her whelps and will rend the call of their heart. And there will I devour them like a lion. The wild beasts shall tear them. Now, it's interesting how it shows us that these are kingdoms, but the Almighty says he will use these kingdoms and works through these kingdoms to execute his word and his will upon the disobedient and rebellious. So Yah is speaking about the four winds in these two verses. He says he will be to us as a lion. And that was manifest to the Babylonians. He will observe us as a leopard. That's in reference to the, the Greeks. He will meet us as a bear, Medo-Persia, and will devour us like a lion and wild beast or Rome shall tear us. So Yah is clearly showing us that he is the one who called the four winds upon us. He is the one that allowed them to devour us. We are still being devoured, but after they have finished knocking us around, we will then understand what it is that Yah wants us to do. We are still in a period of having the wind blow.